You are listening to Over and Back's Basketball Mysteries of the 1970s. Today's mystery is, who were the most fashionable players? All right, we are back, and we are talking about the fashions in basketball in the uh, 1970s. And I am Jason, with me is the most fashionable podcaster that I know, Rich Craig. <laughs> yes, yeah, so like I was doing notes of this earlier being like, why am I like I, I don't like I dress like an idiot. Like my wife constantly makes fun of me and gets mad at me for how I dress. So it's kind of funny that uh, I, I don't I know you're a very fashionable man. So you really should have done the notes for this one. But uh, it's OK. All right. So. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll follow your lead. You know, <laughs> right. I'm like like right now I'm wearing like a WWF wrestling shirt and like basketball shorts. You know what I mean? Like to be fair, I'm home alone so I can do whatever I want because I'm a big boy. But uh, yeah, I'm just not really. Boy, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, but, you know, like not really the most fashionable person in the world but uh, I, I know a good nba fashion when i see it though so that's 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 all right but I, i'm wearing yeah, a, i'm wearing a new orleans jazz uh, t-shirt so that's see so you know what we should talk about more what we're wearing before every episode or, or <laughs> all right we'll, we'll keep that. <laughs> from here on out i will ask you what you're wearing okay we start fair, and, so. fair enough that might get weird but that's that's okay, right where, where did you did you acquire that new orleans jazz shirt in new orleans i did my wife uh my my new wife uh at the time but she's still new but but extremely new wife <laughs> at the time since it's my honeymoon uh f- found it for me in a uh just that's a key random shop yeah so good time that's incredible yeah, yeah that's a, it's a good logo i saw some guy uh there was some guy djing at some uh i was at some outdoor beer fest uh, last week and he had like it, it was jazz like the name of it whatever his dj name was jazz something or whatever and it was the jazz logo but there was like a, a record on top of the J. I i love that i was like where did you get that shirt and he had his headphones on so he didn't hear yeah me, so, there you go you know i'm a big giant nerd but that's all right yeah i was very happy to see that but i like the new orleans jazz logo i'd like to find a t-shirt of that as well but Anyway, let's talk fashion of uh, who are the most fashionable players, fashion just in general in the ABA and the NBA, which is just an incredible uh, thing. And we're going to have visuals as well, which hopefully if if you're not watching this right now on YouTube, you will see in the show description that we have a YouTube link. So if you want to get an idea, because it's not the most exciting thing for us to describe fashion on a podcast. uh, It doesn't really do much justice. So we're going to show some pictures as well. So you can kind of put names to faces and and jerseys to to what we're describing as well. But uh, I'll start off. uh, This is a quote from legendary broadcaster Bob Costas, who got to start covering the ABA uh, because he covered uh, Spirits of St. Louis. And he once mused uh, that the ABA players, their fashions and lifestyles were a reflection of the times from the huge afros to the beards, bell bottom pants and platform shoes i remember larry brown coaching while wearing farmers overalls which we'll get to here in a little bit yeah uh, he was very famous for his overalls but uh a question of uh what were the 10 most 70s tastic uniforms so what, what what kind of uniforms stood out for me and i picked a few that um i think kind of most represent the decade and at least most feel like 70s uniforms uh the first one i picked was the miami floridians which most people are aware of uh, the miami heat wore them not that long ago uh, as well they're you know very 70s they're pink with, with you know kind of a gradient as well i mean just just scream 70s as well and just scream aba as well like that would not have flown in in, in the nba but definitely worked perfect uh in the aba uh indiana pacers have ones uh these ones i i like them actually uh and the pacers have actually started wearing them a little bit more in recent years uh i think two years ago they wore them quite a few times and i think every so often they'll, they'll bring them out again but not really a bad uniform but very different and unique looking uh the new york nets another one that's it's just very 70s with with, you know, kind of the, the stars on the sides and and just had more of a dynamic sort of flowy look to them as well. But definitely felt 70s in that sense. Uh, now you get to kind of a bad 70s, the Memphis Tams, uh, who wore many different collections, uh, many different. Basically, when Charlie Finley took over them, which we talked about in a past episode, he changed their colors to very similar to the Oakland Athletics, which were green, white and yellow, which didn't look great on, on baseball players, but could kind of work, but looked even worse on, on, on basketball players. Uh, in this particular picture that we're going to show in the kind of the video, um, it shows the Tams wearing a yellow top with white shorts, which is just a terrible, terrible look with green as the accent color. Uh, speaking of green and yellow, uh, the Washington Capitals, they went through that look for a little while. And they also had just interesting jerseys as well. They kind of uh, had kind of a swoop on under their shoulder and kind of a flowy um midsection area as well which is just incredible you'll see from the pictures as well it's just a very interesting looking uh, uniform and just not a very good look green and yellow is just not great but in the 70s eh, it looked a little bit better uh the atlanta hawks will move on to one of the nba's uh, kind of oddities uh, of the decade as well most people are familiar with these jerseys uh, they're kind of famous as well they look very similar to those pacers jerseys with kind of flowing lines and that sort of stuff but their real claim to fame is the green and blue and white uh, uh color scheme which is not uh, the most ideal but uh it's kind of endearing as well i kind of you know you'll 
first time you look at it, you kind of go, oh, God, that's ugly. But, eh, you know, you see them in action. I, I kind of enjoy those ones. What do you think as an Atlanta Hawks aficionado as you are? Uh, yeah, they're not bad. I, I I don't like the ones where that green color, the lime green is the dominant color. But as a secondary color with the navy, I, I think it's OK. Like I, I, I think it's pretty neat. Uh, the Pittsburgh Condors uh, I'll move on now. They just had a horrendous uh, color scheme. It was kind of like a. I don't know what, like, not a Dijon mustard. Like, what, what would you call it? I, it's not really a gold. It's, like, not gold enough. It's too yellow to be a gold. What, what, do you, what would you call that color? Yeah, it, it's sort of in between gold and brown and tan. Um, it, it, it's similar to those Wizards uniforms, the color that those Wizards uniforms were, yeah. oh, uh, where they had the gold and the black. It doesn't have the, they're not that bad. They don't have the black, but they do, they have, like, um, you know, red lettering and um, red trim, uh, you know, around the neck and around the uh, shoulders. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're not it's not a good combination but it's uh, you know it's not necessarily the worst either it's 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 more uh it's more just kind of routinely ugly um more than bad it's uh it sort of reminds me of as far as like some stuff that doesn't work it reminds me of like those mid 90s um nuggets uniforms i mean they're not the same color at all but they have the Mm -hmm. same sort of like actually they have that similar kind of golden brown where with only with the uh, the bullets, or excuse me, with the nuggets, it was the accent. It, it was the lettering, right. not, not the actual uniform. It's just a drab color that just doesn't really work on, on a uniform. But uh, in this case, it probably it looked pretty good here in the 70s. Uh, the Washington Bullets, I mean, these are, are not bad jerseys at all. Actually, I love these ones, but they're very, very 70s. But, you know, I would not, I wouldn't be ashamed. I mean, the, the current Wizards uniforms look very similar, and I wouldn't be ashamed if they just went all the way back to this one with the short shorts as well. I want everything. But, uh, yeah, it's a famous, uh, the famous white and red striped ones with the uh, the stars down the shorts. And, and just, I, I think they're classic. I love these jerseys, but they're very 70s. But still, I, I, I really really one of my favorite jerseys of all time uh yeah absolutely those are those are outstanding i mean those are really just um yeah they're great <laughs> and then we get to, uh, some oddities here uh, as well very 70s the spirit of st louis uh they're the colors aren't really bad it's more the logo that the spirit of st louis used which actually is a very cool like it's a very odd like it doesn't work for like a basketball team but it would really work if you were like a I, I don't know some weird company that was selling like kids toys or something like that like the s is like a vapor stream the end of the spirits s is like a vapor stream and then there's a plane and like the the you know st louis is spelled it's just, it's, just a, it's, it's a very odd thing you'll see from the picture here but uh it's all because of the logo like that would never fly in, in another nba era but oh maybe the 90s the 90s was yeah. filled with like odd weird you know cartoonish logos but uh from here on out i don't think that would ever fly but just a very 70s uh look and i think perhaps the the, the most iconic 70s jerseys of all time are the memphis sounds which there's nothing crazy about them they're white and they're red but man that text just screams we were made in 1976 right like that that's yeah if you looked up a font if you're if you're like designing like a a, you're you're a school like you're having a middle school dance and it's 70s theme like you would use this font to describe the dance like for sure it's it's just the perfect 70s font in, in every way shape and form yeah, I completely agree. And I actually really like those um, Spirit St. Louis ones, even the logo. Mm-hmm. I, I, it has the right amount of, like, corny, um, you know, it, it, it's just the right amount of corny. It's not too corny. It's not corny. It's not nearly as busy as those 90s ones. I mean, it, it, well, it's busy, but it's only busy, like, in a limited amount of space. Like, right, it's not like, like they a, didn't use, like, the Grizzlies used, like, every inch of that thing to have, like, trees all over the damn thing. <laughs> right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, where, where it wasn't just to have the cartoon logo, but then you also had to have, like, a raptor on every inch of it in the Raptors jersey and there had to be somebody biting a basketball or a claw or you know it's just like they couldn't help themselves everything had to be busy it's not busy like that yeah um yes yeah, so, so some 70s ones that stand out to me as far as like just being extremely 70s uh the new orleans jazz obviously you know the uh the mardi gras colors and the great logo that we talked about you know that i am looking at right now in my shirt um are terrific the uh the the powder blue uh, buffalo braves uniforms um they're 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 not really uh i guess that's more of an 80s thing for baseball but i that they definitely rocked that in the uh, 70s um i also like the uh i like the 70s kings uniforms with the um even though i know a lot of people are controversial i'm not a big necessarily a big fan of the number being really big on the back and the um or or the i'm um, the lettering being underneath the number on the back it, that looks a little bit ugly but as far as like the, uh, the the front that that king's design and those um those royal blue colors those i were i guess more of a dark blue color i think those are pretty cool so um and the blazers as well i think the blazers ones are oh yeah eh, although not so much the um the year that they had the very the, the vertical blazers um um 
uh, the, 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 which they wore the championship year and only the championship year. But the uh, but the other uniforms were really great, obviously. And then I wanted a little quick bonus one. It's the ABA uh, referee uniforms yes. as well, which were uh, <laughs> to be different and to stand out. They were red and white striped and not like like very closely striped, not like the Washington Bullets who did stripes, you know, with a little little bit of space and more of a dominant white. These were every inch was red or white. It was just that they're they're hideous. So with, I think, blue, uh, like blue accent as well, like a blue collar and a blue like edges on the on the sleeves as well. So just hideous uniforms <laughs> for the referees. But Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's interesting to be different, but yeah, did not really, uh, not, not, not the best choice. The red, red, that blue. was different to be different. Yes. Yeah, sometimes not different isn't always the best thing. So that, yes, it's not always great. I will move on to who had the greatest seventies hair, and this one we could do an entire podcast about. A few guys that I mentioned here: Darnell Hillman. Uh, we mentioned him on a previous uh, episode. He had uh, the biggest hair in basketball history. I don't know who measured that, but <laughs> many remember the ABA does claim that he had the biggest hair in basketball history. So I'm gonna go with them. They, they seem to know their stuff. Uh, uh, he was the runaway winner of the coveted biggest Afro award uh, in the ABA at the uh, 1997 ABA reunion as well. Uh, Dr. J, of course, iconic Afro um, artist Gilmore. Uh, a great quote about him is that he was seven, six with the Afro and he was only seven, two without it. Uh, he's also great and, and well known as well for the Afro and facial hair combo that he had uh, with kind of like the big chops uh, going into the Afro. Like, I think he's the undisputed best hair of the 70s. I don't know your thoughts. Uh, and then we'll get a little bit for the other uh, white men as well. Nuggets, uh, Claude Terry. He was described by Sports Illustrated as a blonde, sunny Bono. And uh, yeah, that meant <laughs> a really disgusting mustache and hair that went over your ears. So uh, and big floppy ear that uh, hair that went over your ears. So that was uh, being a blonde, sunny Bono. Uh, any any guys that stood out for you as the greatest 70s hair? Uh, well, I, I was just going to say uh, Pat Riley also very much had that sunny Bono look for a while. That was that was a very big. Um, he also kind of like the Wolfman look for a while. Like he. Uh, um, you know, he basically he, he had like that big like lion's mane of hair and he had like that big bushy beard for the uh, Lakers. So I, I I'm, I'm not really praising it. I'm just uh, it just made like reminded me of, um, you know, the the guys that uh, stood out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Hair, you know, you um, I think you pretty much picked the uh, you, you, you pick the top ones. I mean, really, it's 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 the Afros that stand out. I mean, there were some guys with long hair, but long hair doesn't really look good in athletes because, you know, they're sweaty and kind of gross. You know, and obviously Bill Walton was the um, it, was, it was kind of the, the first guy to really grow his hair long. I, I think he says he's the first NBA player to wear a ponytail, but I, I don't know if that was really necessarily uh, on the best side of trends. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's I believe Jim Barnett as well has like a really cool like like his mom like parted his hair down the middle <laughs> yes. thing. But it's like yes. but it goes like really long, too. It's like it's like short on top. Uh, and part in the middle, and then it like goes over his ears, and he's got like mutton chops and a mustache. It's like a hideous look, but yes. I'm sure in the '70s he uh, was quite popular uh, with that look as well. So that's, sure, uh, what, who am I to say? And, and what, uh, yeah, and we we can't of course forget um, we can't of course forget Rick Barry um, it, with the comb over, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> comb over is a great comb, one yeah. as well. Yes. So uh, Phil Jackson, I guess Phil Jackson known for his beard, but his hair was kind of normal, right? Yeah, like it was. I, just long it was it was yeah. shaggy, you know. It was definitely it was big. It was kind of big and, and and shaggy, but it wasn't, you know, like it didn't stand out. Um, so I, I I looked up a picture of Pat Riley. I gotta I gotta next time I go to my parents, I gotta scan a picture of my dad in the seventies. I think they had the exact same hair, <laughs> nice, like to a T, and the exact same mustache. Like I yes. I found the perfect picture. So yeah, I will try to uh, include that next time when I go to my parents yes. to find it because there's one picture that I go, oh my god, that might be my dad. So that's uh. uh that's good. But yeah, otherwise, 70s hair, you know, nah, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get to some other stuff. But I mean, it was really the afros that stood out. Yeah, it was really. Uh, uh, J- James Silas had a pretty standard afro, too. Like his, his mm-hmm. was a little fluffier. But, um, you know, it, but his was uh, he, he's another one. I think that, uh, you know, he, he had a pretty strong afro game. Absolutely. And uh, who's uh, there's one guy I'm trying to think of. I'm, I'm looking at the searches. Right now. Oh, who was it? Uh, crap. I can't find him. There was a guy I was trying to think of that had, uh, oh, Dan Issel had like, but he had like the Lego man hair where it was just like perfectly parted and like looked like really greasy as well. I, I, he was one that I definitely wanted to mention as well. But yeah, it's really all about the Afros. Yes. Uh, at this yeah. point. I, 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 we'll have to, I guess we have to throw in Maravich there. Obviously Maravich had. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The big floppy hair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, he's got a little bit longer, um, uh, you know, not too long, but he's got uh, he's got a little bit like past like, the floppy sign and almost you know getting to like hippie town. You know, not not, <laughs> not quite, but it was you know it was borderline there. 
Right, and then you mentioned Bill Walton as well, who just was yeah. kind of an unmade mess today at a certain point yes. as well. Oh, as far as best clothes, oh, sorry. Oh, one yeah, more, I was going to say Slick Watts. Slick Watts, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, I got the, the, the bald look, you know, with the uh, headband. <laughs> yeah, the uh, bald, you know, bald hairstyle yeah, too. So. Exactly. So, you know, he, um, I, I guess he he had some sort of football injury uh, when he was a kid, and he it, it hurt, you know, it sort of cracked his skull or, or what have you, and he didn't, um, he couldn't grow hair there, so he just decided to shave it off. I, I hadn't um I, I i recently read what's happening uh the book which covers uh the 77 sonics and, and talks about him a lot and uh, i had not known that was the reason oh I- that's interesting yeah because i always thought he had uh in the name of case i forgot what that uh, is called yeah, yeah, I always thought he had that because I don't. Does he have eyebrows? I, I don't remember ever seeing him have eyebrows either. But maybe he just said, "Hey, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do this thing. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna shave everything." Or, or yeah. yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he's got eyebrows. They're they're kind of there, but yeah. Well, our, interesting. Yeah. Maybe maybe he made up a story. Maybe I don't know. But no, it was not slick. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate slick too much. Yeah. Though. Okay. Best clothes in the 70s. Uh, there's quite a few contenders here. Uh, ABA coach Larry Brown, as we mentioned at the top of the show, he was very fond of wearing Oshkosh Bagash farmer overalls to games and press conferences. And we have a photo of this. They are hideous. They are awful and just ridiculous. And on the sidelines as well, he wore some ridiculous stuff as well. Uh, remember the, uh, remember the ABA.com has him in like a, it's like a rainbow colored. It looks like, you know, the fruit stripe gum like packaging it's like that put onto a uh, sweater and it, it's just it's really really hideous and you know you got some other uh, coaches as well who wore some really great stuff as well uh dick Mata, well known for his like checkered plaid pants as well um i'm trying to think of uh Mata also he wore some like really garish like button-ups that were like pink with like leopard snow leopard print as well correct yeah i think was that so. dick Mata as well i, I, yeah, I, I believe was- so yes or no, Jack Ramsey is the guy who wore the plaid. Oh uh, yeah, he pants. definitely so wore. I, the, yeah, that's yeah. where I'm making them. I'm mixing those two up. Yeah, Jack Ramsey was well known uh, for the plaid pants, and then Dick Motto is well known for like these really garish like button ups with just hideous colors and just always the, the, the like the collar pops with his chest hair hanging out as well. Just the perfect '70s look. Yeah, and um, you, you've got uh, Lenny Wilkins uh, busting out like the um, like like the. Um, Oh, it's sort of like the yellowish uh, suits with the uh, like the the big pockets and the big collars, and um, you know, with the it sort of looks like corduroy at the the pants. I don't, I don't think they actually <laughs> corduroy, so. but they, they have it. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be interested to see. They might be. Yeah, but yeah, it's really like the coaches you get a lot from because like they were the guys. Like, of course, the players had plenty. You know, you know when you saw them off the court, but like the coaches were always there front and center. So that's really when you watch seventies games. Like that's what really stands out. Is like, oh my god, like those guys are just ridiculous. Like because. It, it, it's just insane, especially what would become of, of, of you know NBA coaches and what they wear today, which is just you know very generic, very you know nobody does really anything wild. But uh, yeah, those guys like you see on the sidelines, and it's just incredible what they wore. Uh, a few other guys here: uh, Kentucky Colonels forward Wendell Lind- uh, Lind- uh, is it Ladner? Uh, Wendell Ladner, yeah. Ladner, yeah. Um, yeah, so he's well known for you know just looking like Burt Reynolds. Like they they mentioned that he like there's one. Uh, so they, uh, they decided to capitalize on his good looks. Uh, you know, women loved him. They had a poster that was uh, entitled Beefcake, which uh, we'll put in the uh, YouTube video as well, which is him uh, laying down on a bench shirtless with a ball over his, uh, you know, his nether regions, which is a very uh, provocative thing for uh, Wendell Ladner. Uh, they had him, um, um, he was wearing only his Colonel shorts and holding a red, white, and blue basketball over uh, his, his junk as well. So uh, the posters were so popular in Kentucky that they sold out in only a few days. So uh, he's a very well-dressed uh, man. Denver Rockets, Miami, Floridian Larry Jones earned the nickname the Mad Hatter because he owned a dozen stylish hats when he went to the Utah Stars. Their game program went nuts because they were able to describe his appearance. So this is in a program, a game program, mind you. Uh, this shows you just the difference and just the era that we're living in here. It's a game program from the Utah Stars. The newest member of the Stars recently showed up to his favorite fashion, or recently showed us his favorite fashion ideas. Larry chose to see the sights, or was a sight to see, in AeroPress Square with black double knit two piece pants and a battle jack accentuated with red and lavender leather stripes for a, for the total individual look Larry topped his outfit with a red loose knit barrette and the latest in men's fashion a solder strap carry all I believe that's called let's go to purse that's carry all man when Larry Jones has it it's a it's a carry all sir but uh that tells you how much different like that's the era like that was in the game program man like imagine that like you you pick up your you know Oklahoma City Thunder game program and it's like you know, mentioning like maybe for Russell Westbrook, they do have a man. That is not something, but that, that era, man, it was all about how you were looking and what you were dressing. Yeah. So 
I kind of admire it. I mean, I would be absolutely like hideous in that era, but that's all right. That's okay. That's all right. I feel like I could do the short shorts look pretty good. I, you know, I'm, I'm very hairy as well. So that's oh, nice. Like, there you go. like the chest hair. I mean, that, that that's an era where it was like, oh, good chest hair. Like, you know, now you know, nobody likes my chest hair, but, you know, that's, that's too bad. You, you, sorry, you were born in the wrong era, man. I really was. Yeah. It really was. I grow great facial hair and I have chest hair. It have been perfect. You're a throwback, so a, you know? Yeah, that's all right. And, and my hair gets real poofy in the humidity, so I could oh. probably pull off a good afro, too. Nice. So it's. <sighs> All right. Shame. All right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, God darn it. But uh, yeah, Clyde Frazier, well known uh, for his fashion, he, he's probably the undisputed king of, of 70s fashion oh, yeah. in, the, in oh, yeah. baseball as well. I mean, like, I don't think there's any, any question here. He's known for his assortment of hats, double rested top coats, long jackets, dark suits, and of course, fur. Man, loved his fur. Uh, became a, uh, a part of who Clyde was, uh, both as a person and as well as a brand. Uh, there's a quote as well. Uh, it's an SI where he mentions I first found out that I was an icon for blacks. Say, like, we'd go to Detroit and after a game, we're on the bus, and all the kids would go, Clyde, come on, man, where's the mink Clyde come on man we wanted to see you dressed up that's when I realized that people were really into the way I dressed so that's when I went somewhat uh, I, I made sure uh, I, I was dressed up and anytime he was out and still to this day Clyde uh, you'll see him in his commentary days uh, when you watch games that he's a man who does not leave the house unless he's wearing something good and usually something a little bit garish as well but uh, that's that became like his brand is 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 Clyde the dresser and there's many images that were shown here in this YouTube video of that the undisputed king like I will not hear anybody else or no one else is even in the conversation he was the undisputed king of 70s basketball fashion. Yeah, it's not even close. I mean, other than Doug Moe, of course. You know, mm. Doug Moe with the flannel shirts yeah. and mismatched jacket and pants. And Yeah, so, he yeah. worked for, like, the white men. Like, for the white men who had, like, <laughs> no idea what they were doing. Right. Yeah, he worked for yes. them. Like, right. But, uh, yeah, no, so so he's our kind of consolation prize. Is like, hey, <laughs> look at Doug Moe. But, yeah, no, he, he's, I mean, Clyde is just incredible, too. And when you couple it with, like, the Rolls Royce and, like, the bags and, like, that man knew what he was doing from, from head to toe. And, and also, like, still to this day is just an, an incredible dresser as well. Just man so confident in, in what he's wearing and what he's doing. So just uh, just awesome to see. And then uh, Artis Gilmore, last one we'll mention, he was also very fond of his fur as well. You see many pictures of him wearing just these gigantic fur coats, uh, which worked really well coupled with his, like, afro and mutton shop. Like it was pretty much just like hair and like fur everywhere in Artist Gilmore. It was just a big fur ball when when artists was wearing that big uh, fur as well. But uh, yeah, just seventies. I mean, just uh, do you? Okay, I, I guess I'll ask you because people have a different take on this. Do you enjoy seventy fashion? Because I think it's awesome. Um, I I mean I enjoy a lot of it, um, it, it genuinely, and I enjoy much of it ironically. So. Okay, I guess, that's I guess it depends on the same, like I probably wouldn't wear a lot of it, but I enjoy looking at it. It's interesting, you know. I mean, some of it's some of it's actually genuinely good, and some of it is so bad it's good. Can you agree that it's better than the eighties? Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that's a hard that that would require maybe a deeper analysis than I'm prepared yeah. to do at this moment. But um, you know, because I haven't really considered all the factors, but probably I would guess overall I probably would like the seventies more than the mm -hmm. which is interesting because when I was a kid uh, living in the eighties and um, I thought the seventies was like the grossest era of like fashion <laughs> like ever <laughs> yeah. you know but the, the, you know, this would have been late eighties early nineties and that stuff is, looks horrible now you know all that all those pastels and all that all you know all, all that bad stuff so I think yeah, that um, I. I, I think if I had to lean toward, I probably would go seventies. But it's it's. I, worth I think the way I look at it is, is men in the seventies looked hideous. Like I don't know what men were wearing. <laughs> like the seventies of men looked awful, but women look great. That's, like I, in the seventies, women fashion is awesome. That, like I really enjoy that. Where men was like, why are you wearing white pants, man? <laughs> like what are you doing, man? It, it just like it really. Whereas the eighties, I think it was almost maybe a little bit different. Where like eighties women fashion is kind of weird, but men kind of got it together a little bit. And then in the nineties, everybody just lost their shit. So <laughs> nobody was good in the nineties. But that is an excellent excellent observation i would i would okay. i think that's a good way of putting it actually yeah i, I would definitely agree it's that. probably the hair i really hate 80s hair and that makes, yeah. makes me irrationally like i just really get upset by 80s hair but yeah women's fashion is definitely much better in the 70s than these I, I will give you i will give you that for sure okay so. all right so there, there's our official word there but uh yeah men's fashion is pretty hideous though in, in the 70s so maybe okay maybe that's a consolation there that we can say if you kind of combine the eras but uh because I'm, I'm doing a google image search for like men's fashion in the, in the 70s and there are a few that are just like oh god like what are you doing but but yeah, the women are they're, they're almost to it. Every single one of them. Yeah, is looking pretty. Whereas the 80s is just, is just kind of all over the place. But yeah, 90s. Um, I, I don't know if I have a strong opinion about the 90s at this point either. And 90s NBA fashion is pretty terrible. Uh, overall 90s fashion. I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe we're too soon to really kind of get an idea for it. But uh, it's not great. It's pretty bad. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, it, I do think 2000s fashion is much worse. Like 2000s fashion is really bad. Uh, like, low key. Like we're going to go back pretty soon and see like early 2000s fashion is real weird. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, the, all the baggy uniforms, and yeah, even in, like when you watch an NBA game from like 2003, you're like, it's crazy. Those uniforms like, are huge. Forget. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I was because I, I I'm I'm watching a lot of the uh, NBA Harvard Classics right now on NBA TV, and there was like some game. I think it was the Pistons Magic in like 2003, and it's just like, guy, it just there's just fabric everywhere. It's like, what do you guys? It's just it, it, it's almost it, it's shocking. Like you didn't realize how quickly it happened, where the guys. Wear, are wearing stuff that's so much more you know you know tight fitted but it's more it's not that those guys are wearing or that guys today are wearing tight fitting stuff it's that guys were wearing such baggy stuff it, like their jerseys are just hanging off like crazy it's like how do you even play when they're like that way but I remember as a kid I had to have baggy shorts as well like my mom kept buying me shorts I was like no they're not baggy enough like everyone's <laughs> gonna laugh at me they're too small like because I remember that, that that was just with the era at the time which is just uh, very odd uh, as well but yeah who are the best? That's his most fashionable ever do. So, who are the best gold chains in the seventies? It's the uh, 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 <sighs> question. I mean, maybe Nate Thurmond. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> but like he would he would throw a couple. Of, although his were kind of simple. But his are like generic. His just looked like a dad, like wearing yeah. his like chain. To the, but no, I, I guess he did it okay. Yeah, um, I don't know if anyone was like rocking medallions. That, that may have been. Go- Nate Thurmond had the worst hair of the seventies basketball players because well, it was just like well, yeah. he just couldn't give it up. Like it was like Nate, it's over, man. He, he, like yeah, he couldn't do much about it. I mean, the, the, the bald lip wasn't in yet, so that that wasn't that was entirely his fault. But. Yeah, I don't know. But we'll leave it to the listeners. If anyone has any uh, thoughts on uh, anyone thoughts on any NBA fashion or uh, gold chains or anything that we uh, anything that we include or anything that we missed, you please let us know. Uh, you can find us at HarvardProxism dot com. You can uh, get at us on Twitter and Facebook at Over and Back NBA. Um, leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to your podcast. A five star review is appreciated, and uh, a review is nice as well. So. Uh, anything else for fashion, Rich, before we go? That's it for me. Yeah, I'd like to hear some feedback as well, because I think it's it's all how you sort of interpret it as well. So there might be people that we may have missed or, or people that I don't. But, yeah, please let us know what you thought of, of 70s fashion guys that really stood out to you. And always include pictures as well. Pictures make it all go around. And pictures and video of, of these guys uh, is, is definitely encouraged as well. But, yeah, no, that, that's about it I got for 70s fashion. But uh, I enjoyed 70s basketball fashion. All right, so cool. I, I believe you did as well. So Hopefully everyone got into uh, the show as well. And uh, whether you listen to it or you, you watch it on YouTube, hopefully it was fun for you. So, uh, all right, until next time, thanks for listening. We'll be back again soon. <laughs>